we're going to break down an important aspect of personal finance, saving. Plus, we'll be pitting the ISA against the traditional savings account to help you understand where your savings will be most effective. So let's dive in. Saving versus investing. When we talk about saving, we're discussing the preservation of money for a short term need or emergency. The primary aim isn't to grow wealth, but to have easy access to funds whenever needed. These are funds you set aside for unexpected expenses like car repairs, medical emergencies, or sudden job losses. The aim here is accessibility and security over growth, which is why savings are usually held in low risk, easily accessible accounts. There are two main options for this, an ISA or a standard savings account. Let me break down the two options, then talk about the pros and cons of each. Individual savings accounts or ISAs. ISAs are tax efficient savings accounts. The interest, dividends or capital gains that you earn within an ISA are tax free. The annual allowance for an individual savings account in the UK was £20,000. This means that you could save or invest up to £20,000 in an ISA in a tax year without having to pay tax on interest, dividends or capital gains. This limit applied to the total amount you put into any kind of ISA during the tax year, including cash ISAs, stocks and shares ISAs, innovative finance ISAs and lifetime ISAs. It's worth noting that lifetime ISAs have a lower limit of 4,000 per year that counts towards the overall 20,000 pound ISA limit. Please consult a reliable financial source or professional for the most current figures as limits can change annually in the UK's government budget announcements. Regular savings accounts. Savings accounts provide numerous benefits. Here are some of the primary advantages. Savings accounts are among the safest places to store your money. In the UK, deposits of up to £85,000 per financial institution are protected by the Financial Services Compensation Scheme, or FSCS. With most savings accounts, you can access your money whenever you need it. This makes savings accounts an excellent place to keep your emergency funds or for short-term goals. However, there are some accounts that mean you have to lock your money away for longer periods and there may be penalties if you try and access your money before that. So make sure you are choosing the right savings account for you. Savings accounts pay interest on the money you deposit. While the rates are generally lower than those that you could get from investments, it's still a way to earn a return on your money with little to no risk. Many banks provide tools to help you save, such as automatic transfers from a current account to a savings account or roundup services that save small amounts regularly. Pros and cons of ISAs versus a typical savings account. Weighing the pros and cons, ISAs shine in terms of tax benefits. The tax-free status can be particularly useful for those who have larger sums of money to save. On the downside, they have yearly contribution limits that might come with restrictions on when you can withdraw your money without losing those tax benefits. Savings accounts, while typically offering lower interest rates and no tax advantages, stand out for their simplicity and accessibility. The funds in a savings account can be typically easily accessed and make them ideal for emergency funds or short-term savings goals. Once you know where you are keeping your money, one of the most powerful things you could start with on your savings journey is an emergency fund. An emergency fund is money that you've saved for the sole purpose of helping you maintain your normal life during financial emergencies. It's not for holidays, luxury purchases or investments. It's a safety net there to catch you when unexpected expenses come calling. So how much should you save? Financial experts generally recommend having enough to cover three to six months of living expenses. However, the amount can vary depending on your personal circumstances, including your job stability and lifestyle. Starting an emergency fund may seem daunting, but remember, even small regular contributions can add up over time. 
Prioritize building it up and consider keeping it in a separate but still easily accessible account to avoid temptation. Setting goals and making plans. When it comes to saving, it's essential to have clear goals in mind. They can be short term, like saving for a holiday, mid term, such as saving for a car, or long term, such as saving for retirement. The timeline will influence where you save your money and what strategies you use. The first step is to determine how much you need to save for each goal. Then establish a timeline for achieving these goals. Based on this, you can work out how much to put aside each week or month. Consider setting up automatic transfers to your savings account to make the process effortless. Quick practical tips to save more money. First up, start tracking your spending. You can't know where to save if you don't know where your money is going. Use a budgeting app or a good old fashioned pen and paper and start recording every purchase. Next, make saving effortless by automating it. Set up regular transfers from your current account to your savings account. If you never see the money, you will never miss it. Impulse buys can seriously derail your savings efforts. Implement the 24 hour rule. If you see something you want, wait 24 hours before you buy. You might find the urge to purchase has passed. Many banking apps now have roundup features. These round each purchase up to the nearest pound and put the difference into savings. It's an effortless way to save without even noticing. Take a look at your utility bills. Could you save by switching providers? What about making your home more energy efficient? Small changes can lead to significant savings. Eating out and ordering in can be a massive drain on your wallet. Try meal prepping at home. It's healthier, cheaper, and can be a lot of fun. Unsubscribe from marketing emails. Out of sight, out of mind. You'll be less tempted to spend if you're not constantly bombarded with sales pitches. Also look into any subscriptions you could pause or cancel that you don't use. Finally, make sure you do subscribe to this channel for more personal finance tips. This video is part of my Money Management for Beginners series. Check out the whole course over here. Like this video if you found it useful. Thank you for watching and I will see you in the next one. Bye.